Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really easy and inexpensive uh, solar lamp using supercapacitors. Uh, you don't have to use these exact components. You can use variations, but what I have here is a 5 volt, 60 milliamp solar cell, two 1.5 farad 5 volt supercapacitors. Uh, you don't even need two. You can have uh, one, you can have five. doesn't matter, we'll get to that in a second. Rainbow LED, 390 ohm resistor, and a 1N4001 diode. So let's look at the schematic. So what we have here is a 5 volt, 60 milliamp solar cell. Again, you don't have to use that specific cell. It doesn't really matter because we've got our diode right here, our 1N4001 diode. And what that acts to do uh, is to uh, allow for current to flow from the solar cell to the capacitor. Uh, but when, uh, when there's no sunshine, make sure that the power stored in the capacitor does not flow back through the diode. It's a one-way street for power. And it also acts for us to, to give us a bit of a drop. Now we'll talk about the drop in a second. The capacitor is rated for 5 volts and 1.5 farads. Our solar cell is rated for 5 volts. A capacitor, a supercapacitor, has a tolerance of anywhere from 10 to 20 percent, meaning that its maximum charge could be uh, 5 volts plus 20, 10 to 20 percent, or 5 volts minus 10 to 20 percent. So this diode is going to have act to uh, bring the voltage, the max voltage here, down by a little bit, down to say 4.3 volts, uh, because there's a drop along the diode of roughly uh, 500 to 700 millivolts. So it's it serves two purposes: one, to block power from draining back to the solar cell, and secondly, uh, to add that critical drop so that we charge our capacitor safely. Um, what I've done here is here's one capacitor, one 5 volt, 1.5 uh, farad capacitor, but you can also add in a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth in parallel. And every for every capacitor you place in parallel that's the same value, you'll have uh, you'll add you'll you basically add capacitances. So you'll have for, so this bank, this single capacitor is 5 volts at 1.5 farads. Add another capacitor in, and you've got 5 volts at 3 farads. 1.5 plus 1.5 equals 3 farads. Add another one, it'll have 5 volts at 4.5 farads, etc., etc. We're going to use two capacitors for this specific project. You can add a switch here, right here, if you'd like, up to you. Uh, but if you place this out in the sun all day, what's going to happen is our, uh, our rainbow LED and our current limiting resistor, that circuit is not going to require a heck of a lot of power. Power is going to be stored much faster than it's being expelled through the rainbow LED. Uh, in any case, uh, whether or not you choose to put a switch here, we're not. We're just going to put this circuit out in the sun. What happens is, is uh, as soon as the capacitors are charged, the rainbow LED will start uh, will start changing colors. It's actually really pretty, especially in the evening, in the dark. This 390 ohm resistor acts to limit current from our capacitors to the LED. If you don't have a, a resistor here within anywhere from 200 to 600 ohms, what's going to happen is uh, the power on the on the capacitors is, going to, is just going to go right through the LED and fry it. Now, rainbow LEDs have little tiny, tiny, tiny microcontrollers on them. I don't even know if I'd call them microcontrollers, but uh, it acts to change uh, the, the color through pulse width modulation. There's, I think there's actually three LEDs on the actual LED itself. And the reason that I'm not using a, uh, a Jewel Thief for this is because the Jewel Thief, uh, the oscillation on the Jewel Thief causes the rainbow LED to be confused. And I've tried and I've tried adding uh, capacitors to lower that noise, but in any case, it was driving me nuts. So I'm just going to make this video and I hope that help, hopefully that you can uh, hopefully you can use it. So I went a little uh, Mr. Fancy Pants with it. Uh, I uh, did add a little jumper as a switch so I can let the capacitors charge if I want to. Uh, all while power will go to the LED at all times or I can charge it, remove that jumper, uh, place the jumper on when I want it to light up. But I'm pretty sure that this lasts about three hours. So let's go out in the sun and see what we can do. It's not very sunny at all, uh, but I am getting a little bit of light. There's no sun to be seen. It's an overcast day, and yet it still took only about five minutes to fully charge from zero volts to 4.5 volts. Now, just watch the, the LED, it changes colors. It's more visible, obviously, in the dark and much more majestic. Uh, if I'd use majestic as a word to describe that, but I can remove the jumper if I'd like. Caps are still charging, but no power is being applied to the LED. Plug it back in, and we've got red, 
green, blue. Again, it's not very, it's not very. It's, it's, it might be a little bit difficult for you to see in this light, but much more, uh, much easier to see in the darkness, and quite pretty. So that's one way of going about it. I've got two two capacitors. You could have one. You could have twenty more capacitors and in uh, parallel. The longer, the little it'll last. Fun, simple circuit. Uh, put it together. It literally took me five minutes to solder it together on just a little piece of uh, proto board. Very simple. Anyhow, hopefully you found this uh, enlightening. Maybe you'll uh, make a variant of it on your own. Thanks for watching.